Hey guys, uh, my name's Adam, if this is your first time here, and uh, today we're going to be talking about Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. Uh, this movie, it recounts the life of Chuck Barris and also explores the possibility of him being a CIA assassin. Uh, it's a very cool idea for a movie. Uh, Chuck Barris actually wrote this book, and uh, mo nobody really knows if it's a true story or not. It seems pretty far-fetched. Uh, it's kind of hard to believe. What's really brilliant about it, if it is a made-up story, is the fact that when the CIA denied it, it actually adds credibility to his story. The, um, you know, if this tr story is just made up, the best thing that could happen is for the CIA to say it's made up because they're not going to admit that this person worked for them if they actually did, right? I thought that was pretty brilliant. It sort of shows the creativity of this person because he came up with all of these hits in the 70s that a lot of people obviously they sort of think they're wishy-washy shows but everybody watched them and then this, mo this movie or book that he wrote it just shows how creative this guy really must be if if the book's made up you know nobody really knows I tend to think it's sort of made up right we know this guy's creative we know this guy wants to be in the spotlight you know maybe the CIA would hire a celebrity to go kill people but I mean I think there's just a lot of coincidences this per you know I've, I saw an interview where I don't remember when it was, but I do remember it's sort of interesting that he's always sort of in the same place as these hits happen, but I think it's just a coincidence, right? Now, with that said, um, I do want to talk a little bit about the cinematography of this movie. I thought that's one of the best parts of this movie is just how well directed it's done, and it's George Clooney's first, uh, first film directing, right? And um, it's interesting because there's obviously, you know, everybody's going to notice the... the um, the, what do you call them, the color filters or the filters. What I thought was really cool was the sort of, the scenes where, you know, for instance, he, the main character is talking to his girlfriend about this new idea for a show, and it zooms in on his face as he has this realization, and as he's explaining it more, it zooms out and he's in a different room and he's explaining it to the executives while he's pitching it. I thought that was very cool. Also, um, Drew Barrymore, I gotta say, she hit it out of the park in this one. The most, um, the most sort of heart-wrenching scene is when she finds uh, the main character with another girl in their house and she's obviously trying to sort of marry this guy and settle down and have a relationship with this guy the entire movie even though she says differently. That's sort of a, an interesting part to play because you have to, um, there's a lot of subtext to it, right? You're saying one thing even though you feel a different way. And that's one of the main things that I think this movie, one of the things that I took out of this movie is it's got a lot to do with misrepresenting yourself or deception because obviously the main character, his, his personal life reflects his love life because he's sort of in a relationship with Drew Barrymore while he's out doing these other things with other girls and you know doing these secretive things that doesn't involve her at the same time he's portraying himself to the rest of the world as this nice person TV celebrity and he's going out and killing people in you know and he's keeping that a secret from them as well Drew Barrymore is sort of another reflection of that because she's going to him saying you know no strings attached this is an open relationship I don't get attached when really the whole time she's wants to marry this guy she has these deep feelings for him she's not totally honest about it she's um, she's just as deceptive as he is um, now I gotta say though this movie I personally felt it was pretty drawn out. I had a hard time sitting through it. I didn't. Um, I didn't really enjoy it. It's not gonna. It's not that I didn't enjoy it. I'm glad I watched it at least once, but I'm probably not gonna go back and watch it again. Um, another thing I want to mention is the the my favorite scene is um, when he's getting rejected by all these women in the opening. He. Uh, you know, they talk about how he's uh, he's basically lying to all these girls and uh, his uh, inability to articulate his frustration led to multiple bar fights. And as soon as I saw that, it was like, okay, I know a lot of guys like this. You immediately know who this character is. And then from there, it sort of explores out and um, it's 
really great character development because like I said you sort of see him as like everybody knows this guy that just lies to girls to get in their pants and they only get so far with them and uh, you know sometimes they may even be able to foray that into a relationship and I you know I'm not saying I don't want to you know say anything bad about that but obviously I mean I don't think I have to too right but uh, and then they're sort of these macho guys and whatever and then it um, you know it takes that um, that sort of identifiable character that we all know and then explores like if that's true then this and if that's true then this and if that's true then if they managed to um, to get on TV what else would they do and it just sort of spirals out of control and just shows how crazy this this person is so anyway um, that's my review like I said um, I had a hard time sitting through it it's not it's not for me but I'm sure that a lot of people will enjoy it. Actually, I saw that most people gave this movie, uh, you know, on IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes, it seemed to consistently get about a 7 or 8 out of 10. I think that's pretty high, but um, as far as, I mean, really, the cinematography, the acting was great on it. It had, uh, it had really every, it had that sort of familiar uh, group of Hollywood, um, Hollywood buddies that you sort of see in every movie. There was Julia Roberts, Brad Pitt, uh, George Clooney, you know, all those people. It, um, it's interesting because it's sort of an anti-Hollywood script, but you can't really classify it as anti-Hollywood movie because of the very star-studded cast. It's, uh, you know, in most films, you sort of look at, uh, you sort of look at it like, oh, I can't really... You sort of, whenever they take risks, it's like, that would be hard to get. Like, I can't believe they managed to get that by them. But with this, it's like George Clooney's directing it and all of his buddies are in it. You know, Brad Pitt apparently did this for free. If anyone wanted to tell him he couldn't do anything at any moment, he could have said, well, I've, you know, we want to do this and you can't tell us not to, right? I thought that was kind of uh, kind of interesting. Anyway, that's what I thought of the movie. I, I, I can't recommend seeing it, but, uh, you know, it, there's going to be people that like it. It really wasn't for me. That's it. Uh, let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. Maybe I missed something, you know. Uh, maybe there's more to it than I saw. Let me know below. Thanks, and uh, have a good day.